Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Miss Angela Lansbury in A Thing of Beauty, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Your arm? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. I think we should just miss the storm if we hurry. A rather somber place, isn't it? Well, it gives her seclusion, and that's all she's ever asked for since she came here. That and what little spiritual comfort I've been able to give her. Uh, how long ago was that, sir? Uh, that she came here, I mean. Oh, eight years. Let me see. Oh, no, no, no. Nine. Uh, nine years ago in May. But uh, it was long before that she left the stage. Oh, she was nearly ten years in an institution, uh, a mental disorder. Uh, though it's not her mind was ever sick or I'm mistaken. They do say she's a bit on the eccentric side, though. Oh, you'll be her spiritual advisor yourself soon enough uh, when I've retired. And I want you to meet her without prejudice. And one day I'll tell you what I know, which goodness knows is little enough. And uh, what I have reason to believe, which is uh, somewhat more... Ah, it seems we'll just about escape adventure. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, she lives completely alone? Oh, the one servant, that's all. Oh, Mother Benton. Oh, Suzette. Uh, this is my new curate, uh, the Reverend Mrs. Sedley. Uh, we're here to see Miss Tremaine. Well, do, does she know you are not alone? Of course, Suzette, I haven't any idea. Uh, but you might let us in out of the rain while you so inform her. But if... Very well, come in. Ah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh. If you will wait in the study, I will ask if Mademoiselle is able to see you. Uh, what in the world has got into the woman? She knows Miss Tremaine's been seeing me every fortnight at the same time for nine years. Oh, there's a picture here. Is it of her? Uh, probably. My word, she was a beauty. Oh, your father could have told you. Ah, yes, she, she was a legend of two continents. It must have been a very tragic thing to make a woman like that shut herself away. Is it true, sir, that... She sees no one but you? No one. As far as I know, she has never set foot outside this house in all the time she's been here. Nor has she ever had a single visitor beside myself. But why? And my dad will see you now, Father. In her parlor, across the hall. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, hello, hello. Come in, come in. Thank you. I do hope you don't mind my receiving you in the dark, but I have a mortal dread of light during the storm. Oh, not enough at all, my dear. You'll find two quite comfortable chairs just there by the window, I think. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Madeline, uh, this is my new curate, Mr. Sedley. Oh, yes, Mr. Sedley. Uh, it's a great pleasure to meet the famous beauty, even in the dark. Yes, I suppose you've heard of my beauty, Mr. Sedley. You know, as you came in, I was looking at this little gold mirror. Engraved on the back are the words, A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Ah, oh, Keats. Yes, Oscar gave it to me. Oh? He said it was a magic mirror. When you are very old, Madeline, he said, you will only have to look in it to see yourself as you are now, young and radiant and a joy forever. And I've believed ever since that Oscar was really something of a magician. Because you know it's true. <laughs> Uh, was that Oscar Wilde, Miss Tremaine? Yes. Dear Oscar. Dear dead days. I suppose you've already heard of all the wild tales of my lurid past, Mr. Sedley? Oh, no, Miss Tremaine, I assure you, I... I don't believe that Father Benson has ever caught me in a very reminiscing mood, have you, Father? But since you will one day be thicker here, Mr. Sedley, perhaps it would be better if you heard the truth from me. Miss Tremaine, don't think I... All the truth is wild enough. It all began, I suppose, when John Gaylord gave me my first speaking part. That was all too far ago to tell. My hair was a little darker. My voice was not quite as rich as it is now. I saw more silvery, perhaps. John and Nell gathered for the leaves, and my part, well, it was one of those obscure little parts that no one pays any attention to until some obscure little actress comes along and makes the start of a career with it. It was then that I first experienced what will always be to me in all the range of human feelings a supreme exaltation when you hear the full frenzied applause of an audience for you, for you alone. Yes? 
Madeline. May I see you? Oh, come in, John. You are not. Simply marvelous. Thank you, John. Such a little fool. A fool? I've told you to play the part. Down, but it's getting worse and worse. Tonight she's absolutely furious. She's going to make trouble for you, Madeline. <laughs> trouble? What kind of trouble? Oh, you don't know Nellie Garrett. But I know my audience, don't I? Oh, Madeline, you're so young and foolish and so beautiful. Why, thank you, John. So terribly beautiful. Oh, John, you're leading up to it again, aren't you? Oh, Madeline, this play isn't going to last forever. Even you can't keep it alive much longer. Why, why don't we make plans together now? We could have our own company. As the great John Gaylord and Mrs. Gaylord? Oh, no, no, of course not. Why, in a couple of years, you'll be as famous in your own right as Nell Garrett herself. Perhaps I don't want to wait a couple of years. Besides, John, I don't love you. Oh, uh, do you love anyone? No, but when I marry, it will be, oh, it will be an up-and-coming young member of Parliament like this. Oh, you must know it. You're in for it now, Maggie. So, so there you are, my son. No, no, he's Miss Garrett. She's meant no harm. No harm, indeed. She has merely ruined my entire last act curtain for 29 consecutive performances, hoisting her stretched clear above the ankle, opening the stalls like a music hall breakfast. She's done because it's that kind of a part. Oh, is it indeed? Well, as long as I play the lead in this company, I will not have my best speech in the whole play utterly ruined by rowdy applause for the gutter antics of a half-baked town shield. Oh, now, please, you're making a fool of yourself. And why will on the subject, Mr. Gaylord, there are a few points I should like to discuss with you. When you help Miss Tremaine down from the swing in the second act, there's no need for you to keep your arm around her during the entire remainder of the scene. I'll admit that she appears ready to swoon at any moment, but one peep show performance is quite enough for an evening in Drury Lane. Well, really, Miss Garrett, if you can no longer hold either your audiences or your lovers... You cheat! I'll kill you for that, Mel Garrett. If I die for it, I'll kill you. I left the theater and walked aimlessly out into the night, my eyes blinded with tears. Young, yes, foolish as I was, I believe my poor little heart was truly broken. For I knew that Nell Garrett could ruin me with every theater manager in London, and I knew she would. I wandered through those misty streets, or where, or even what I did, I shall never know. But just as dawn was breaking, I found myself by some odd twist of fate passing by the lodgings of John Gaylord. On a sudden impulse, I climbed the steps to his door. Yes? Madeline. Hello, John. Why, darling, did anyone see you? See me? Come in, come in. Where have you been? Oh, just walking, walking. Good Lord. Alone? Yes, why? Don't you know? Yes, John, I'm afraid I do. My career... Your career? Oh, my poor child. John, what is it? Don't you know that Nell Garrett's been found dead with a knife in her back? Dead? Murdered. Oh, John. The police have been looking all over London for you. I've been expecting them here every moment. For me? Of course for you. But why? Madeline, last night you threatened to kill her in front of a dozen witnesses. Why wouldn't they be looking for you? Now, Madeline, listen to me. Listen to me now. Where did you go? What did you do? Didn't anyone see you? Didn't you talk to anyone? Oh, no. But you've got to tell them something. What can I tell them something? Because if you don't, they'll... Yes, yes, they, they'll hang you, Madeline. Oh, no. Please, Madeline, we've got to think. Try to remember something. Oh, I'm so alone. If, if only I had a friend. I have got a friend, Madeline. I'm your friend. Believe me. Someone who loved me enough to at least say they were with me. Oh, Who is it? Inspector Trellis, Scotland Yard. Madeline, in there, quickly. Don't don't worry, I'll tell him something. I'll hurry. I'm coming. I'm sorry to rouse you at this early hour, sir. All right, sir, come in. You are Mr. John Gaylord? Yes. Of the Queen's Players Company, Drury Lane? Yes. Can you tell me, Mr. Gaylord... Anything of the whereabouts of Miss Madeline Tremaine? Madeline Tremaine? Yes. Why, I... Did you call me, darling? Oh, excuse me. Who is this lady, Mr. Gaylord? Well, who are you? I'm from the police, madam. Police? There's been a murder. Miss Nell Garrett of the Queen's Company was found stabbed in her home last night. Nell Garrett? Yes. You know her? Why, of course, Mrs. I'm afraid, madam, that I shall have to ask you for your name. I am Madeline Tremaine. 
I'm so sorry that you find me somewhat in disarray. Miss Tremaine, I'm afraid I shall also have to ask you to account for your whereabouts after you left the theater last night. Very well. Mr. Gaylord can account for my whereabouts. Well, Mr. Gaylord? Why, I, uh... You see, Inspector, it's rather a delicate matter. Because since I left the theater last night, I've... I've been here. Is that true, Mr. Gaylord? Yes, quite true, Inspector. Ah, I see. Is that satisfactory, Inspector? Yes, yes. 